I get asked by you guys so much, what do I do to my car? Do I put coilovers on it? Do I put wheels on it? So I thought I'd make a list on the five best modifications that you should do to your car when you first get it. The five things that everyone should start off with because I did them myself. I learned so much from them and it's always good passing down knowledge. Now, firstly, one disclaimer, this list isn't the best things that you should do to your car when you first get it. It's more the things that everyone should try out when they first get one. If you're just getting into the car scene and you're bored and you don't know what to do to your car to begin with, this is the perfect video for you. It's also different to all the other videos out there because you get a whole bunch of videos suggesting the same thing as coilovers, you know, springs or wheels and tires. Those are all great, however, but they're not different to what everyone else is just suggesting. So, so she's a bad bitch. So let's talk about the five modifications that you should do to your car when you first get one. Let's start off with modification number one. It's a Saturday night and you're out driving with all your friends. The sun is setting. You're driving your car harder than you've ever driven it before. You're in the hills. You're revving your car up to 9,000 RPM or whatever it goes to. But there's one thing lacking. You can't hear your car. You can't hear it screaming. The sounds that are coming out of it aren't translating to the thoughts that you're hearing in your head. It doesn't make any sense. Number one is a muffler delete. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't know what a muffler delete is, it's pretty self-explanatory. You delete the muffler on your car. Usually when we talk about deleting things on a car, it's getting rid of them or replacing them with something that bypasses it. Now, the reason why I suggest this to so many people is because sometimes with a muffler delete, you can get an incredible sound. Yes, you can put sports exhausts on. Yes, you can get custom expensive exhaust systems and stuff, but why not start out with a muffler delete? It might sound really good. In my experience, in, on one of my cars, a muffler delete was the best thing that you could do to it. <laughs> it sounded amazing. The red Camry that I owned. Holy <laughs> Ooh, and that muffler delete was incredible. On my white Camry, however, that thing was, oh, it was droning. It was, it was droning. It was like a bass drum, like playing right next to your ear, like. <laughs> So in some cases, a muffler delete might be the best thing that you do to your car. And not only do you get a really good sound from it, you get to learn all about your car's exhaust system. You see, the whole point of a muffler is to get rid of that exhaust sound. Instead of make a car sound quiet, in most cases, on like economical cars, like a Camry. Like, why would you ever do that on a Camry? Why, why would you ever do a muffler delete on a Camry? That's so stupid and so... <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Doing a muffler delete is really good because you also get to learn a lot about your car. You get to see what sort of things that you need to do to your exhaust to make it sound good. In some cases, like I say, a muffler delete is all you need for a car to sound good, but in some cases, it's gonna sound crap and you will need to get a sports muffler. But a muffler delete can be done so easily, like five minutes it'll take someone to do. You just need to remove a couple bolts, you need to maybe take some hangers off and you'll get a muffler delete. That's like five minutes of work and you can have something cool happen to your car. Every car has the potential to sound like a race car, even, even a Camry, guys. Anyway, let's move on to number two. Generally, you want to improve how your car feels. Now, with a muffler delete, you might feel some of that, but you won't get that handling performance. Handling is a whole different category, and that's why number two is sway bars. Sway bars are incredibly cheap for what they are. Essentially, what they do is they connect your suspension components together better. Okay, they do it the same way, but they're just stiffer. <laughs> The whole point of sway bars is to stop body roll and the stiffer the sway bar, the less roll you'll get because it'll connect those suspension sides a lot more aggressively. So when you corner, you'll just get less body roll and better handling performance. Sway bars in most cases are incredibly easy to install. In most cases, you can take a sway bar out with like four bolts. Every car comes with sway bars. However, the sway bars that are in cars from factory are flimsy. And the whole point they're there is to, yes, they stop a little bit of body roll, but they're designed in the idea of having comfort. When you get performance sway bars, they make that driving feeling more aggressive and they're, they're stiffer than stock. So on an upgraded sway bar, energy gets transferred quicker from one side to the other so you get less body roll. It pretty much just makes your car a little bit more stiff and allows your car to turn in harder. If you pair sway bars with coilovers or springs, your car is drastically gonna change in performance characteristics. It's gonna completely change how the car feels on a track, how it feels on the road. Sway bars are one of my favorite mods to do to cars. Let's move on to modification number three. Now this modification is only for manual cars. So if you wanna go to the next mod, Go to this time right here because this is only for manual cars, guys. Sorry so much for all the automatic drivers. I have nothing against you, except for the fact that, you know, you can't shift gears like a manual car and you don't have a clutch. I'm just kidding. I have two, I have two auto cars. So number three is a short throw shifter. You see on stock cars, usually you gotta go like this. <clears throat> to change gears. Now to fix that, you get a short throw shifter. And what that's gonna do is allow you to change gears 
faster than usual. It's gonna give you a physical difference in how you drive a car, and it's gonna make the overall driving experience so much more pleasant and fun. A lot of the time on manual cars, on especially stock ones, you get like a lot of play in the shifters. You know, you might not be able to feel uh, which gear you're in all the time because there's just so much play. A short throw shifter will fix that. It will 100% fix that. Short throw shifters are usually on the cheaper side of things, and they're relatively easy to install on some cases, of course, they're always gonna be those some cases. Uh, Euro cars, you gotta remove transmissions and stuff. But <laughs> Usually they're pretty easy to install and you can get away with doing them in the car, um, depending on your drivetrain and stuff. But a short throw shifter will actually change how you drive your car, it'll improve it. A short throw shifter is gonna improve your driving. It's gonna make you drive even quicker than normal. You'll be able to get into gears quicker. It's just a great modification that you can do. Let's move on to modification number four. Now this is surprisingly not mentioned in any list that I've looked at so far because again, my list is a little bit different. It's not like a big modification, it's kind of small. But number four is LED light bulbs. And the reason why you wanna put LED bulbs in your car is because you can make your car look completely different. You can get like 8,000K or four, 5,000K, whatever the K number is, and you can make your headlights look a little bit more blue. And that is gonna change how your car looks at nighttime. And, and having your car look and sit good at nighttime is awesome. Like now, if you go watch Hardnet Media's night videos, you can see that all the cars that he shows off have blue lights. That could be some like good color grading and stuff, but usually a car looks better with blue headlights. So not only are the looks of the car gonna improve, but you can also get a benefit because brighter lights help you see better at nighttime. Now you wanna make sure that you don't go crazy cheap on these headlights because in some cases you can get LEDs that cut off drivers in front of you. I know that the first pair of LEDs that I purchased for my car had a really crazy like widespread light throw and when I got an upgraded LED bulb kit, it had a cutoff line. So make sure you get a good set of LEDs but you can get really cheap ones that are good and they're really easy to install. Crazy easy, it's just like replacing a bulb. When we talk about LEDs, you can change LEDs from the rear tail lights, you can change LEDs in the interior, they're more reliable, they have more light output, and they look better than the normal typical halogen bulb or whatever they are, just the normal bulb. LEDs are gonna make your car look a lot better and a lot easier to read. And last but not least, number five, pod filter, baby. <laughs> This is a very controversial one. Installing a pod filter on your car can gain performance, but it can also decrease performance in some cases. Now, obviously you don't want to decrease the performance in your car. You want it performing as best as possible. But if you're like me and all you got is a Camry, a pod filter can be one of the best ones that you ever do. You see, when I installed a short RAM intake with a pod filter on the end of it on my Toyota Camry, it was louder than when I installed an exhaust. It was incredible. <laughs> It was so good. I still don't know if it was giving me worse power or worse fuel economy, but that sound changed everything. Now you can argue that a pod filter increases performance and it doesn't increase performance. I'm not too sure. In some cases it does, some cases it doesn't. But like the rest of the mods that have suggested, pod filters are very easy to install and they sound awesome. The idea behind installing like an intake or a pod filter intake is that you get less restrictors in the way of the airflow. You know, on factory boxes, there's all these little paths that the air has to travel through to get to your engine. Usually on aftermarket intakes, they direct straight through to the engine and there's no sort of resistance in the way so that's the whole idea behind them so honestly you might get a little bit of a decrease in performance and if your car is like a Hyundai gets then yeah you don't want to decrease your performance but if you're all about that sound that your car is going to make with all that induction sound then definitely consider an intake so I really hope that helps some of you out and gives you some ideas of things that you can do to your car. And I know this is not the typical list that you get from all those other videos telling you to install coilovers, wheels, springs, and all that kind of stuff. That stuff is really good and I suggest that you do all of that. But this, this is the stuff that you can do home on the cheap. And things like the muffler delete, they're reversible. So you can always put it back if you don't like it. If you guys have any modifications that you suggest that people should do for the first time ever on their car, the first ever mods people should ever do, then please definitely comment down below and tell us because we've all been through this journey of modifying our cars. In my case, I started off with the Camry, did sway bars, wheels, tires, you name it. Did an engine swap in the MR2, did sway bars, coilovers, blah, blah, blah. Spent a lot more money and now we have this thing to spend money on, so. <laughs> That's sort of the reason why I kept it cheap because not everyone wants to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on their cars and stuff. Because I understand for some people it's a hobby and because I understand for some people it's a hobby, they don't want to be breaking out bank loans. But in my case, it is my job. 
so it does make sense that I spent lots of money on these these things and modified them and stuff for you guys to enjoy. If you're new to the channel and you want to see Toyota Chaser content, Toyota MR2 content and some Camry content, I'm going to be building this car from the ground up. It's pretty much bone stock. Make sure you subscribe and of course, like the video if you enjoyed it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. Bye.